How's everybody this evening? It's great to see you all. Um, and so this uh, is something that uh, we didn't expect to do until a couple of weeks ago. And the members of the Suffrage Centennial um, Committee of the Brockton Public Library, if you want to raise your hands, I think everybody is part of the group today. Um, said, so let's try to do something on the 26th of um, August. And the reason is because today is the day 100 years ago that the 19th Amendment um, to the Constitution was signed into law. Um, and so we decided we were going to try to do something. And we found out about this um, uh, Forward into Light campaign that's sponsored by the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission in Washington, D.C. And what they're doing is they're lighting many landmarks and buildings across the country in purple and gold, including the Library of Congress and National Archives, in honor of the historic suffrage slogan, Forward Through the Darkness, Forward into Light. And so uh, what we've got here is we're going to learn a little bit about the history of the suffrage movement through, um, I think we have videos from 16 or 17 of you, including, um, it, including all the students who were winners in our youth uh, suffrage poetry and art competition several weeks ago. And I want to thank the uh, committee to who picked the winners and uh, they're all thrilled and they all came on and you'll see um, their, uh, what they wrote for their poems. Um, and it's going to be very interesting. Uh, we also have some incredible um, local leaders like Rita and Susan and Tina and Wynn um, who have some very interesting words to say here. Uh, we'll also hear from the mayor and a few other supporters like Phyllis from uh, the NAACP and a few other folks as well and several members, just about all the members of our committee. And I didn't have time to record something separately, so I decided I'm just gonna host this whole thing. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, thanks to uh, Paul Engel, who has been our partner in crime through this whole thing. He's a member of the committee, but more importantly, um, he's put his full support behind this project. Um, and he's the one that has encouraged us to go ahead with nearly 50 different events as part of this <laughs> suffrage centennial project, um, which, uh, yeah, okay, we won't go any further than that. Um, but also thanks to the uh, uh, Library Board of Trustees, of which I know Phyllis is a member, um, for their support as well. And I'd especially like to thank um, the Barbara Lee Foundation and Mass Humanities for funding this whole project and this entire series of programs that we're doing here. Um, and special thanks tonight to Brockton Community Access for being here to uh, cablecast tonight's program. Um, we're going to be interested in hearing your feedback. Um, at some point, um, Jen will put into the chat window the link to the Mass Humanities uh, survey. Um, and at the end of the event, it would be really great if you could um, take that survey. So I'm going to go ahead with the presentation. At the end of the presentation, we're going to open up the um, floor to any comments you have, any questions you have. Um, I know the students who are on would love to be able to talk about what inspired them. Um, I remember asking Melody what inspired her to write the poem. Uh, Melody is the one who uh, was the top first place winner. Um, and it, her response just floored me. So I hope that we can get Melody to uh, jump in and give you a, a reason why she wrote what she did. But we'll see that in a little while. Okay, I'm going to share my screen right now. Um, and hopefully this is going to work the way I hope it, it should be working. Um, and let me make sure that the audio is recorded. If you can all see that, it's say, let me know, but I can't see what you're doing now because I'm um, looking at this right now. All right, so um, 
the program tonight is called Forward into Light. And as I said, it's uh, based on the uh, event, uh, the series of events that the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission is holding today on August 26th um, to honor the uh, signing of the um, 19th Amendment. And, uh, you know, I'm fondly calling this Brockton Honors 100 Years of women's suffrage. So as I said, on this date in 1920, the 19th Amendment um, was ratified, signed into law. And as President Wilson finally said after first um, fighting this as much as he could to have it not happen, this is the time to support women's suffrage. Hi, this is Robert Sullivan. I'm the mayor of the city of Brockton, and it's truly my honor and privilege to, uh, to give a congratulation and a shout out to the Brockton Public Library and all the efforts that have been going on since January. Uh, dozens of events uh, relative to suffrage uh, have, uh, have been celebrated because this is the centennial year of the women's suffrage uh, here in the United States of, uh, of America. And of course, the 19th Amendment was passed uh, in 1920 on this day, August 26th. And, uh, you know, I'm proud as a lifelong Brocktonian and now as the mayor of the city of Brockton that the Brockton Public Library and so many people have come together. And, and now because of COVID-19, of course, we've done a lot of Zooms to recognize and celebrate this historic uh, national uh, event. And so today, uh, this evening, quite honestly, here at City Hall, we are going to light City Hall up. It's going to be purple and gold are the colors. And it's also recognizing not just um, the suffrage movement, the passage in 1920 of the 19th Amendment, but also the 26th is Women's Equality Day. So um, I just wanted to uh, thank everybody that has been doing these uh, unbelievable historic educational um, uh, celebrational events uh, over the time since the beginning of the new year. And today is a special day in the city of Brockton and our nation as a whole. So as the mayor of the city of Brockton, I just want to uh, uh, restate the historic slogan, which is forward through the darkness, forward into light. And that sums it all up. So uh, thank you for everything that you are all doing to celebrate this. It's my honor and privilege and let's, uh, let's celebrate. Enjoy. Okay, so um, even here in, you know, on the South Shore down in Taunton, um, you know, the headline was as big as could be, you know, the women's right to ballot now a part of the Constitution. And, um, you know, I had, I tried to find the Boston Globe's uh, headline on it, but it came out really blurry. So I found this one from the Taunton Daily Gazette. Um, so as I said, um, today is the day in, in 1920 that Congress signed the Women's Right to Vote 19th Amendment into law. And in celebration, as uh, Mayor Sullivan just said, we're going to be lighting up City Hall. Um, if uh, the Brockton Enterprise ran something last night, it's while we were trying to test the system. But uh, it is there for tonight as part of this Forward Into Light campaign. Um, when was the 19th Amendment first introduced to Congress? And why does the women's right to vote hold special meeting to the director of the Brockton Public Library, Paul Engel? The 19th Amendment was first introduced to Congress by California Senator Aaron A. Sargent in January 1878. Sargent's wife, Ellen Clark Sargent, was a leading voter rights advocate and served as president of the California Women's Suffrage Association. The 29 words that Senator Sargent introduced failed to pass in either of their lifetimes. However, through the tireless efforts of women and men in the American suffrage movement, the amendment was certified on August 26, 1920, 42 years after it was first introduced. Throughout 2020, the Brockton Public Library, with the support of grants from Mass Humanities and the Barbara Lee Foundation, has been celebrating the suffrage movement with panel discussions, movie presentations, and an impressive list of guest scholars. I would like to personally thank the Suffrage Planning Committee for their efforts and for being especially nimble in converting nearly all the 50 events into a fully online modality. 
Tonight, we celebrate August 26th by joining municipalities across the nation and participating in Forward Through the Darkness, Forward Into the Light, where we will light up City Hall in gold and purple, two of the colors that represent the United States suffrage movement. The 19th Amendment has a personal meaning for me as it secures the right for my daughters and my granddaughters to freely and peacefully participate in our democracy. Never take lightly your right to vote. It is our single most important responsibility as a citizen of the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. You know, people know many of these names who were associated with the suffrage movement, you know, like Sojourner Truth and Harriet Tubman and Lucy Stone, um, Susan B. Anthony, of course, and Elizabeth Cady Stanton. However, um, it's particularly relevant that uh, we here in Brockton celebrate this occasion. Uh, many women and men in the Brockton area were involved in the suffrage movement following creation of the Brockton Women's Suffrage Association in 1876, which included um, Etta Luella Jacobs, who was president of the original Brockton Equal Suffrage Association, and Lenny Burnham Brown, the association secretary. And of course, let's make sure we don't forget about Blanche Ames Ames, and that is not a, uh, a typo, that is her name. She was Blanche Ames and married in Ames um, from Easton, who was president of the Easton Suffrage Association a true Renaissance woman who was an artist, a political activist, uh, an inventor, a writer, um, and prominent supporter of women's suffrage and birth control. We've been honored to have as our humanities scholar and Brockton area historian and teacher extraordinaire, from what everybody tells me, Willie Wilson Jr. as an active and engaged member of our Brockton Library Suffrage Centennial Committee. Willie has guided the research that helped us learn about Brockton's place in and people involved in the suffrage movement. Hello, my name is Willie Wilson Jr. and I'm the scholar for the suffragette program at Brockton, Brockton Public Library. And uh, I just want to express what being involved with this project has meant to me. Uh, my particular assignment has been to research and unearth unbelievable uh, 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 true stories about black suffragettes. And, uh, but this project has been more than that. Um, I've always had a love for history and, uh, and it, it, this project has also brought to fore of uh, the wonderful life of uh, Blanche Ames and her contribution to the passage of the 19th uh, Amendment. But uh, also, it's also brought together all kinds of facets of the community. Uh, and it's just wonderful to celebrate the 100th anniversary of this, uh, this phenomenal amendment and, uh, and what it, it did and the possibilities for the future. Again, uh, thank you for all of you who participated in any of the myriad activities that the committee has sponsored. And again, I'd, I'd like to uh, also, uh, this, this lighting of City Hall and the illumination and the, the colors of, of the movement, the suffrage, suffragist movement is, uh, is quite exciting. And uh, City Hall built in the 1890s um, with the theme of celebrating the victory of uh, the Civil War, the city of Brockton, which became uh, a city in 1881, and it had all of this, this promise for the future. And, uh, and as we go on to the second century of the amendment um, and what that portends, it also talks about uh, the possibilities here in the city of Champion and uh, that every, every participant, every uh, citizen is a vital part of that democracy. Women, um, children, immigrants, and regardless of color or race, uh, uh, America has so much potential. And, uh, and had we harnessed that potential in the past um, by not discriminating against women, 
Um, just think of how advanced our nation would be today. But also we just wanna focus on the future where everybody's uh, potential will be realized. Thank you. Thank you, Willie. So, you know, one of the interesting things is women had never voted before. So they actually had to show women the process about how to vote. And I'm not quite certain how that um, uh, leads to how we vote today um, or how similar or dissimilar it is. But um, I'm sure it was very interesting back then. And you can see a lot of very interested vo faces there. All right, um, is it almost dark enough outside to light City Hall in purple and gold lights? Um, these photos were taken um, earlier yesterday or today um, and shows you uh, City Hall and all its uh, grandeur. And uh, we're gonna, in a little while, when it gets just a little bit darker, we're gonna light up uh, that building, the side of the building on the right in purple and gold. All right, there are many, many people who are grateful for the hard work and efforts of the women who came before us um, and fought hard for the 19th Amendment. Not the least among them are three members of our current Brockton City Council, Susan Nicastro, Rita Mendez, and Tina Cardoso. And here's what they have to say about it. We are elected members of the Brockton City Council. I am Tina Cardoso, the first female from Cotton Valley. I am Rita Mendez, Brockton Council at Large, and the first uh, Brazilian American elected to office. I am Susan DeCastro, the Ward 4 City Councilor, and I'm the first woman attorney elected to the City Council. We would not be standing here, here today if it, it wasn't, wasn't for the ratification 100 years, years ago of the 19th Amendment, Amendment of the United States Constitution. Which prohibits state or federal restrictions on voting based on sex. If it were not for the many activists that worked hard on this amendment, I would not be standing here with you today. So please go out there and exercise your right to vote. It all began in 1920 with the 19th Amendment. And did you know it took 100 years to become the law? And even after its passage, women faced problems with voting. It was 45 years until passage of the Voting Rights Act of 1965, which prohibited racial discrimination in voting. Voting is a precious, precious right. Please vote. We believe the, the ancient, ancient proverb that women hold up half of the sky. Okay. Um that when I first saw that last night when it came in, it brought tears to my eyes. So uh, thank you ladies for uh, getting together and doing that. Uh, here's some suffragists on a hike to Boston. Um, we recently held an art and poetry contest for local youth, which I referred to earlier. Um, each winner will receive a cash prize of $50, $75, or $100, depending on how they placed in the competition. Um, it was a contest for students in grades 3 through 12, but we didn't have anybody younger than an 8th grader to participate. But um, when you see these poems and see the artwork, um, you'll understand how much uh, the suffrage movement and women's right to vote means to the youth in our community. Here are our two third place poetry winners. Anna, an 11th grader from Sharon High School. Her poem is entitled, Angry Women. Hi, I'm Anna and I live in Sharon. Um, so the title of my poem is Angry Women. The air smells like sweat and hard earned victory and the crowds turn out in masses. Masses are also where the good girls go on Sundays instead of fighting for their rights. Sit down, they say. Keep your mouth shut. No one wants to hear what you have to say. Dangerous minds form dangerous ideas, and there's something dangerous about giving others power that they didn't have before. The dangerous oh. women with dangerous minds used to be- Oh, it's Anna. <laughs> Air smells like sweat and hunger. Thank you. Oh. Please, please make sure you mute your microphone. Um, 
Jen, I think you're able to do that also for them. And here's Avanji, a ninth grader from Avon Middle High School with his poem, The Fight for Voting Rights. My name is Yvonne G. Jacks. I'm going into the ninth grade and the school I attend is Avon Middle High School. My poem is titled, The Fight for Voting Rights. There once was a time when women couldn't vote. This was not fine. It left women on a negative note. Susan B. Anthony, Alice Paul, the suffragists marched angrily. They weren't happy at all. Soon enough, the NWP protests erupted, women holding pickets very high. The system was very corrupted. They won't be quiet and stand by. The 19th Amendment was ratified on August 26, 1920. Women couldn't be denied. Voting booths were no longer empty. We now live in a time where women can vote. It was a very hard climb, but now at the top, they can float. Thank you, Ivanji. Um, let me see. Somebody was... Uh, Annotating the screen, please don't do that. Thank you. Um, our second place winner is Sonia, who's a ninth grader from Sharon High School, with her poem for Elizabeth Stanton. I'm Sonia Gray, a rising freshman at Sharon High School. For Elizabeth Stanton. Two steps forward, one step back, slowly, surely, making a path. A road for them. A road for them. Probably will rise when we fall. We can't run, together we'll crawl. Helen and Grace, Eva and Mary, Dorothy, Alice, Elizabeth, Carey. Not their choice anymore. They can't knock us down. We're bulletproof now. We'll shatter their crowns. We sing and we scream. They can't drown us out. We're dancing, we're marching. We hum and we shout. Just a bit farther, soon we'll be heard. Soon we will count, we won't be deferred. Our daughters will know, will know that they matter. For them we will run, for them we will stagger. Stand up and cry, sit down and laugh. Thank God it's over, they don't know the half. The 19 is here, our struggles are past. We found we can stand, stand and outlast. But now it's the 20s, 100 years later. Yet our troubles may be even greater. Women can vote. I hope that they do, for equality still has quite the cue. So think for a bit. Who can I help? Who can I save as well as myself? Thank you, so Sonia. Um, as I said, I hope we'll have a chance to have a conversation with Melody uh, later, who's our first place winner, uh, 10th grader from uh, Brockton High School, about what inspired her to write her poem poem entitled, What About Me? Hi, my name is Melody Rivas. I go to Brockton High School. I am a sophomore. The title of my poem is What About Me? The war was not won in 1920, yet there were still white women aplenty, dropping their signs, leaving the streets, raising their voices to whoop with glee, drowning out the frantic colored cries of, what about me? The war was not won in 1930. Many women were left still yearning to vote right next to their fair skinned peers to get what they had been denied for years. Their voices were silenced, their ballots were empty, but they did not stop in 1920. The war was not won in 1950, but there was no time to waste on pity. American women from all shades of life, natives, Hispanics, and blacks alike, never stopped making and painting their signs, never stopped fighting to gain voting rights. And when met with a pale opposing crowd, they raised their voices twice as loud. Nothing would stop them, not even their fear. 
and continued their fight right up to the year of 1965, when a fateful rally was planned to march the highway from Selma to a piece of Montgomery land. Though the protest was peaceful, bloody Sunday still did raise, and by state troopers meant to protect, they were beaten, gassed, and tased. But despite the attacks, the protesters would not be scared away. They continued their highway march to span all of three days. Through this injustice, they fought back, and they were paid off with the Voting Rights Act. The war was won in August of 1965, when colored women across the nation were able to set down their signs, when they stepped off the streets and to the polling place formed lines, when they stood together and said, the right to vote is mine. Thank you. I think you'll agree we have some very incredible students and students who won the poetry con contest. Um, the first place winner in the art category is Stephanie, who's a 10th grade student from Brockton High School. Um, her art piece, which she will describe in detail about um, what she drew and why she drew it and the significance of everything she has in the artwork. Her art piece is entitled Sojourner Truth. Hi, I'm Stephanie Amanze. I'm a rising sophomore at Brockton High, and this is what I did for my art entry. My piece is a rendition of the famous abolitionist and woman suffragist Sojourner Truth's portrait. I used alcohol markers, colored pencils, a Sharpie, white gel pens, and Pigma Micron pens as my medium on a 12 by 12 sheet of mixed media paper. I chose to draw Sojourner Truth as my entry because she's one of the most renowned and well-known women suffragists in the 19th, in 19th century America and was at the head of my two favorite social justice movements in, America, in American history, the abolitionist movement and the women's rights movement. Sojourner's silhouette is outlined in red with white strips going through it because the color red often symbolizes courage and strength, two virtues truth was known for. And the white stripes were added because white represents equality and truth not only fought for the equality of black people, but also for the equality of for women as well. The women's suffrage movement is identified with the colors violet, white, and gold. So I drew those going through Sojourner Truth. The abolitionist movement's logo is a black slave in handcuffs with the phrase, am I not a man and a brother, written on a banner underneath the slave. To incorporate her involvement, with the abolitionist movement and give it a twist of femininity as well, I changed the phrase by altering the male pronouns to female pronouns. Am I not a woman and a sister? This allowed me to show the alliance between these two movements and how truth was the mediator. In the white space of my drawing, I decided to write the most famous speech Sojourner gave in her career as an activist. The Ain't I a Woman speech she gave in 1851 at the Women's Rights Convention in Akron, Ohio. This was very influential in the women's suffrage movement as it showed how the movement was failing black women at the time and only catering to white women. She signified this by asking the question and ain't I a woman many times in her speech. On the border of my piece, I wrote the years that had significant events in a soldier's life that I felt needed to be included. In 1797, she was born. In 1826, she finally escaped slavery after being sold four times. In 1843, she changed her name from Isabel Bonfrey to Sojourner Truth. In 1846, she officially joins the abolitionist movement. In 1850, she was one of the many famous attendees at the first women's suffrage convention in Worcester, Massachusetts. In 1851, she gives her an anti-woman speech. In 1867, she creates a program to help ex-slaves. And lastly, in 1886, 1883, she dies in Michigan at 86 years old. Finally, I colored the border with royal blue because blue signifies legacy. Sojourner Truth left a royal legacy that exemplifies the progress of women and Black Americans today. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, it is definitely getting darker outside. You can see the clouds coming in overhead and the lights are there on City Hall and it's not quite time to turn on the lights yet. 
give it another few minutes. Um, Alice Paul, uh, every time one of the states ratified um, the 19th Amendment, um, she put a, she sewed a, a star on uh, this flag. And as you can see her on the right side, um, that's her ratification flag that was in, unfurled in its entirety um, when the 19th Amendment was signed into law. So the Brockton Public Library Suffrage Centennial Committee is uh, Jen Belcher, uh, Paul Engel, Catherine Honey, myself, Pat Monteith, Amina Pilgrim, Willie Wilson, Jr. You've met Paul and Willie. I would like to introduce you to Catherine and Amina. We are so very, very fortunate and grateful for the expertise of the two of them, their dedication and very creative ideas to this project. Kudos from Catherine Honey to the city of Brockton for participating in this nationwide celebration forward into light. By lighting up municipal buildings in the colors of the suffrage movement, the citizens of Brockton commemorate the passage of the 19th Amendment granting women the right to vote on August 26, 1920. As a member of the Brockton Public Library Suffrage Committee and the coordinator for the Southeast Mass STEM Network, it is an honor to work with committee members to recognize the efforts of Brockton area men and women who lobbied, marched, picketed, and protested for the constitutional right of women to vote. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Dr. Amina Pilgrim, and I'm proud to be a member of the Brockton Public Library Suffrage Project as a member of the Suffrage Centennial Committee. As a historian, a mother, an educator, and a community leader in the city of Brockton, it's been such a pleasure to be a part of this work. Uh, which brings together um, various passions of mine, uh, working in the community, educating folks and raising awareness about important historical topics. And I'm especially proud of the work that this group has done to make sure that the memory of the suffrage movement is intersectional. One of the first events that I took part in happened just before uh, the double pandemic um, emerged, and that was an event at Brockton Public High School where we discussed uh, the, the legacy of Black women in, in the suffrage movement, and we made sure to honor icons like my heroine, Ida B. Wells, and others like Mary Church Terrell, and so many others whose names are not known, uh, but who made the suffrage success possible. And I'm proud to um, walk in their shadows and I'm proud to be a part of this group that makes sure that everyone else knows their story alongside the stories of all of the other um, unsung heroes of the suffrage movement. We hope that you've enjoyed our program and we thank you for your support. Okay, so I'm gonna stop sharing for a second because um, I understand that um, there are some issues with it uh, and I don't understand why. Um, so what's the last thing that you actually saw? City Hall. City Hall. Um, okay, let me try to uh, bring City, that back City up. Hall. Yeah, let me see if I can bring it back up again at that point. Uh, the slide where it says, um, it, is it getting darker? It's getting darker. Okay. And you couldn't see or hear anything past that? No, I couldn't. Okay. I could hear, could but I could not see. Hear, yeah, but we couldn't see. 
we could hear, but we couldn't see anything. Ah, okay. Let me let me try going back. I don't know why that's this it looks fine to me on my end. Um, so I'm going to start it one more time with the um, Suffrage Centennial Committee. Let's see if I can share it at that point. Um, let me see. See if I can get this up. Um, right now, it's not even letting me share my screen. Grady, can you see if something's going on with the network upstairs in the spare room? You know, we're seeing oh. ViewPad is just your, you, you're frozen and we hear your voice. Exactly. Your video, about 30 seconds after you stopped sharing your screen, your video even uh, froze. Now we can't see you because I'm looking at Jen Belcher's name on the screen, so I don't know what's going on. Um, anything I do upstairs is going to completely disconnect this entire event. Okay. Okay, this is telling me the Zoom meeting is not responding. Um, let me, I wonder if I can sign out and sign back in. And I should be able to because Jen, you're a co-host. Um, if, the, if this, everybody don't go anywhere <laughs> yeah. or if it does close, then I'm sorry, you're going to have to re-log back in. Well, she... Willie, you're muted. If we log uh, back in, it would be the same link, right? Right, Pat? She's gone right now, yes, but I can, okay. yeah. Is Grady, would it be the same link? I believe so, but I can tell you this. There was a huge crash with Zoom over the last couple of days. They chose to put a new version of their software everywhere on Sunday afternoon. And right. the, wor the world still has not recovered from that. They're, ha they're having bandwidth problems because if everybody's using this all day and all night long, they don't have a system that's capable of supporting all these connections. Okay, me? so can can Pat you, is back. back. Okay, Pat, you're right. back. Pat I'm is back. back. Let me try sharing the screen again from where I had left off. Um, can you see this? Yep. There we go. Well, <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> All right, I'm going to try to pick it up from this point. Um, and if it's not functioning, then, um, well, you have ways to let me know. All right, so um, you need to mute your, um, there you go. All right. And so I was, uh, I had mentioned who was part of this, the Suffrage Centennial Committee. Um, we've already heard from uh, Paul and Willie, and let me try again to see if we can get Catherine and Amina's uh, videos on. Well, now I can see it, but there's no sound. Now we can't hear Is that it. nothing? We can see, but now we can't hear. Oh. Can of vote. Amendment granting women the right to vote there it is. on August 26, 1920. As a member of the Brockton Public Library Suffrage Committee 
and the coordinator for the Southeast Mass STEM Network. It is an honor to work with committee members to recognize the efforts of Brockton area men and women who lobbied, marched, picketed, and protested for the constitutional right of women to vote. Congratulations. Hi, I'm Dr. Amina Pilgrim, and I'm proud to be a member of the Brockton Public Library Suffrage Project as a member of the Suffrage Centennial Committee. As a historian, a mother, an educator, and a community leader in the city of Brockton, it's been such a pleasure to be a part of this work, uh, which brings together um, various passions of mine, uh, working in the community, educating folks and raising awareness about important historical topics. And I'm especially proud of the work that this group has done to make sure that the memory of the suffrage movement is intersectional. One of the first events that I took part in happened just before uh, the double pandemics um, emerged. And that was an event at Brockton Public High School where we discussed uh, the, the legacy of Black women in, in the suffrage movement. And we made sure to honor icons like my heroine, Ida B. Wells, and others like Mary Church Terrell, and so many others whose names are not known, uh, but who made the suffrage success possible. And I'm proud to um, walk in their shadows, and I'm proud to be a part of this group that makes sure that everyone else knows their story alongside the stories of all of the other um, unsung heroes of the suffrage movement. We hope that you've enjoyed our program and we thank you for your support. Thank you, Amina. All right, so uh, Brockton Mayor Robert Sullivan is uh, extremely appreciative of the time and efforts of the, uh, our committee and the work that we've done in the production of nearly 50 events and activities that started in January and will continue into November of this year. Mayor Sullivan has a special presentation for the committee. Hi, this is Robert Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton, and today is Wednesday, the 26th of August, 2020, and I'm here in my office at City Hall, and one of the great joys of being mayor is to be able to present official mayoral citations, and today I will be doing that to the Brockton Library uh, Suffrage Centennial Committee. Uh, it's really a wonderful endeavor that started pre-COVID, where we were doing the uh, educational forums right at the main library on Main Street. And then because of the coronavirus, of course, it's been transitioned into a, a Zoom type of forum. But there's a lot of time and a lot of effort put into this, and I want to applaud each and every one of you on the committee. It's extremely important. So as mayor of the city of Brockton and as uh, the son of a history teacher, I'd like to present this official citation uh, to you today. Official citation, be it known that the mayor of Brockton hereby extends his appreciation to the Brockton Library Suffrage Centennial Committee in recognition of your distinguished service by educating our community and our youth on the centennial of the women's suffrage movement. The City of Brockton, also known as the City of Champions, is extremely grateful for the outstanding leadership that you have all provided. Therefore, it gives me great appreciation and pleasure to present this official citation as a symbol of my appreciation. This citation is duly signed by myself, Robert Sullivan, Mayor of the City of Brockton, on this 26th day of August 2020. Again, I just want to thank each and every one of you for your time and efforts. It's really a wonderful educational forum, and I really look forward to many, many more that will be forthcoming in the near future. Thank you very much. Okay, so um, is it dark enough now yet? Um, as you can see, the colors uh, on the right, the gold colors are starting to come up. Just needs to get a little bit darker and um, we should have the full colors of the gold and the purple. 
So many people and organizations have supported the committee um, even before the project began, writing letters of support to potential funders, coming up with ideas for guests and events, and some of them are here right now to give you their own perspective on the project. There have been many events celebrating the 100th anniversary of the women's suffrage movement, as it should be. This is a historical moment. The movement was important 100 years ago, and it is still important today. 100 years ago, black and white women fought together for the right of women to vote. They faced opposition, of course, but these women would not be deterred. I have to reflect to Sojourner's Truth speech, Ain't I a Woman?, about a woman's right to vote. Sojourner Truth's bold assertion of her own identity is imperative today. Her I am a woman's right serves as a timely reminder that the fight for equality has always been and will continue to be a constant challenge and ongoing rhetorical and physical process within our democratic society. I salute the 100th anniversary of the women's suffrage movement. This is Phyllis Ellis, president of the Brockton Area Branch National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. Thank you, Phyllis. We really appreciate it. Lynn Howard, fourth grade teacher um, in Weymouth Public Schools, member of the American Association of University Women, South Shore. Hi, my name is Lynn Howard. I'm a fourth grade teacher at the Murphy School in Weymouth, Massachusetts, and I'm also a member of the American Association for the University of Women on the South Shore. Uh, I'm really excited that we've been celebrating the centennial of the 19th Amendment this year, and I'm just so thankful for all of the women and men that fought so hard for over 70 years to see this legislation get passed. Um, I'd like to, you know, acknowledge women like Blanche Ames from Eastern Massachusetts who held a suffrage event at her mansion in January of 1915, and Harry Byrne in Tennessee who changed his boat at the last minute thanks to a letter from his mother, in addition to all of the other great men and women that helped to pass this legislation. I've really enjoyed all the different events this year. Um, I've seen theater presentations, read many books, gone to many online presentations, and I'm looking forward to even more this week to celebrate women and our right to vote. Just want to remind everybody to register and make sure that you vote in our elections. Thanks. So uh, here's members of the National American Women's Suffrage Association, um, who included, um, which included Maud Wood Park, who was at that meeting that um, Lynn just referred to at Blanche Ames' house um, in January of 1915 um, to see the signing of the 19th Amendment. Several other community leaders who owe their current positions to strong women who came before them, including Brockton City Councilor Winthrop Farwell, who shares a story in honor of his great-grandmother. I am Councillor at Large Winthrop Firewall. In 1879, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts passed a law allowing women to vote in school committee elections. In 1881, my great grandmother, Martha J. Firewall, was the first woman elected official in the city of Brockton. I ran for office 100 years later in 1981. So, in honor of my great grandmother and to all of the women, who fortunately received their right to vote in 1920. We honor you, we thank you for all you've done for our country and for our city, and we look forward to many more years of women participating in politics and being the leaders they are. Thank you, Wynn. And State Representative Claire Cronin. I'm State Representative Claire Cronin. 2020 marks the 100th anniversary of the passage of the 19th Amendment to the Constitution. Suffragists began their organized fight for women's equality in 1848, and for the next 72 years, women lobbied, marched, picketed, and protested for the right to vote. Today, millions of women vote in elections because of the courageous women who never gave up the fight for equality and more women run for office. 
Today, there are 12 women in the Massachusetts State Senate and 46 women in the House of Representatives. And Brockton has had our fair share of firsts. One of the first women to be elected to the Massachusetts House was a Brockton teacher, Sylvia Donaldson. I was the 182nd woman to be elected to the House of Representatives and the first woman in history to chair the House Judiciary Committee. So I would like to thank the women who paved the way for me, State Representative Jerry Creedon and State Senator Anna P. Buckley. We stand on the shoulders of those who came before us. And I'd like to especially thank the Brockton Public Library for commemorating this very important milestone. Thank you very much. Okay, is it time yet? I think it is. There we go. All right, applause everybody. Yay. Um, that's what City Hall looks like right now if you were to go to City Hall, which I'm not supposed to encourage you to do because of COVID-19. Um, you will see that City Hall is, in fact, um, a blazon in purple and gold colors. Um, these photos are going to be um, sent to the Library of Congress and to the Women's Suffrage Centennial Commission in Washington, D.C., to show that we, too, participated in this very historic event. Thank you to everybody who's participated. Special thanks to um, Tim Carpenter, the superintendent of Parks in Brockton. Grady, who did all the film editing, um, everything that you saw there, he put together. John Garrett was a photographer for the um, City Hall photos. Francesca Damari did some video editing too. Um, our partners, Brockton Area Branch and AACP, AAUW South Shore, Southeast Mass STEM Network, and at the Brockton Public Library, just about everybody there participated um, on some level, but um, in particular, Thomas Ahern, who's done a lot of research with Willie, Sue, Sue McCormick, and Paula Jones, who's no longer, who retired from the library. And of course, the Barbara Lee Family Foundation and Mass Humanities, who gave us all the money that um, was needed to be able to uh, produce these events that we have been producing and will continue to produce over the next couple of months. Um, with continued funding from both those organizations, we do expect to produce more women's suffrage programming into November 2020. Thank you. What do you think? That was awesome, Pat. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. It, it did not disappoint. It did not disappoint. Not and the good. young people, the young people. Oh my goodness. Uh, look at Paul. Look at Paul. Paul's got the citation. Kudos, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, and to me, it was wonderful. Yeah, now, what, what's, what's really funny is we weren't supposed to physically get the, the citation until after tonight. And Paul sent me a text yesterday. Oh, guess what I get from It's like, don't tell anybody. <laughs> wanted to surprise the committee. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it was a surprise. Yeah. I did. That was a surprise. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just so you know, folks, this is the third citation that this suffrage program has received. We also received one from the Massachusetts State Senate and the House. Mm. Jerry Cassidy and Mike Brady. Yep. And it was presented at an event that Mass Humanities was hosting at the State House. Um, so that was great. Good and job, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for participating, um, Tina. It you was know, awesome. It was good. It was good. I mean, in the student work, and I, I, I was impressed. The poems were excellent. The artwork was excellent. And and then Claire Cronin spoke, and she was one of my former students, and it was just like a full cycle. It's very Stop touching. dating yourself. <laughs> yeah, I would like to see if we could get the uh, the portrait uh, to display in the library, Pat. So Stephanie is right right next to you. She's got oh, it right there. It yeah. Oh, How beautiful. About it? And, and uh, I was just gonna say, in the way she explained it. 
uh, uh, the detail, the colors, the meaning, um, just amazing, just amazing. Thank well, you, you know, um, Phyllis um, portrayed Sojourner Truth at one of our events back in uh, February. And so when I saw what Stephanie had done, and Stephanie, by the way, is our bronze medal winner in the AXO competition for the health and medicine oh, category. Yay. Great job, Stephanie. Thank you. Yeah, I put a note for you in the chat. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, I did see it. Thank you. There you go. So, Melody, I would love to have you, um, uh, first of all, let everybody see what you look like, even though we've already seen it, um, but also to explain um, what inspired you to write that poem. She wrote the award-winning, uh, first place award-winning poem, um, that you heard that just really touched my heart. Um, and Melody, could you, you know, maybe talk for a few minutes about what was your inspiration for that poem? Well, it was funny because the initial inspiration I actually got just from a post I saw online about how Asian women actually got the right to vote much later than white women in 19... I think about five years after afterwards I could be wrong but that just got me thinking about you know why that was and obviously how people were fighting for it and I just thought it was so important to like bring this up because it was 40 years later before colored women were allowed the right to vote and it's it just like stuck with me that like a lot of white women they must have just not not even not cared but i know that i was researching it and many of them like actually oppose colored women vo voting and i thought it was just awful that they were being left behind like that and i just really wanted to bring that to attention and how even though they were being they were being like put off by their own like people that they had fought with they still like managed to bring themselves up and be like well, hey, you can't forget about me. And so that's why I wrote my poem. Hmm. Thanks, Melody. Ivanji, what was your inspiration for writing the poem? Well, my inspiration, I mean, I just read kind of about the whole movement as a whole from like starting from the beginning all the way to the ratification of the 19th Amendment, and I was just inspired by the persistence and perseverance of all the women to have a right to vote, especially since it's voting, which is like one of the key parts of our country. And that's kind of really what inspired me the most, how like they spent a lot of time trying to get their right. There you go. You know, one of the, um, I think, inspirations for us as the committee to do this um, competition um, is to try to get more students understanding what went on um, in trying to get the 19th Amendment passing. And, you know, Ivanji and Melody, I think, just is witness firsthand to us um, that they did the extra research in order to be able to write their pieces. Stephanie, can we go back to you for a second? Um, no. <laughs> um, I know that um, you, I mean, is uh, Sojourner Truth somebody who's an inspiration to you? Um, and why? Uh, yeah, she really is an inspiration because she was fighting for the equality of two um, marginalized people at the time and I thought it was just really really in, really inspiring and in how like how strong she was as a person like I read how she like gave birth to, like 13 children and they were all sold to slavery and I just I couldn't imagine going going all through all that and still being able to like stand up and fight for what's right like I just thought that was really admirable so I decided to draw her for my 
Phyllis, you want to say anything she, about that? She, yeah, she's one of my heroes too, Stephanie. She and Harriet Tubman. I live by these women. <laughs> Strong, effective women. I love them. Okay, you should so hear my poem when I said, Ain't I a Woman? I recited it for Black History Month. I think the uh, library recorded it even, so you might want to go back and, and check it out. <laughs> yeah, I can send you it a link to page. it so you can hear it. <laughs> it is on the page. It's on our suffrage page. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so whoever is iPad 2, I don't know who that is. It looks like you have your hand up. You want to uh, unmute yourself? iPad 2. Yeah, it just says iPad 2. I don't know who you are. Can you un unmute if you have a question? Oh, there we go. I am. I'm all, I'm all set. Thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, when, when, what are your thoughts here? Well, I don't want to put a lot of pressure on the women. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was just getting ready to type Grady a, a message. He asked me, "What's in your glass?" And I, ginger ale. I, I swear, my wife keeps me on the straight and narrow, so I had a little ginger ale here. Uh, I happen to think it's ironical that in the year 2020, when we celebrate the 100th anniversary of women getting the right to vote, I really believe women, and in particular minority women, if you follow politics nationwide, they're going to determine the destiny of this country. And, and I, don't think that's, I don't think that should be one of them. I think, I think they're going to turn out in record numbers, they're going to vote, and they're going to chart a, a positive course for the country. And I, I, I want to talk about inspiring, maybe I'm hyperbole, but I can really believe that. Okay. Rita, Tina, do you agree? 100%, and I think that women, they they really fought hard for the right to vote. So if we're here today, especially elected officials, because uh, those brave women really fought and believed that we could make a difference. So yeah, I agree 100%. Tina? We made, we made Wynn say that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, know, you know what it is, is I have seven grandchildren and five of them <laughs> are, are girls. And... Um, they, Girls rock. Women are the pillars, and in, in it's it's, hard. Right. it's 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 the other one is if I can digress from it is Ann McCormick. Some of you may know Ann very well. She was on the school committee. She was the only woman on the school committee when I first started serving, and all of us men would never look at an issue the way Ann would. She was always able to zero in on something that we did not recognize, we did not see, we did not understand, and bring that conversation around to where it should be. And that taught me a very valuable lesson. It really did. It's, unless you've experienced it, you might not, you might not grasp it, but, but Anne was that person that did that. And, uh, and I'm forever grateful to Anne for her service because it certainly shaped how I approach things and how I listen and uh, and now I've got Rita and Tina and Sue and Shirley and and uh, it makes a difference it does thank you yeah. and I appreciate that and for the it's our time I was saying you know um, it's time for women to rise up and it's time for us to empower and, and encourage each other for the young ladies that are here with us um, you know, share your experiences with other girls and uplift each other and motivate each other and, and let's stick together because it's, it's definitely our time. So thank you, Wynn, for acknowledging that. And thank you all for all your hard work. Yeah. Thank you, Tina. Susan, do you have any comments, any thoughts? Well, it's just been a pleasure to be a part of this in a small way. And um, it's so important to acknowledge these milestones Imagine it took 100 years for the 19th Amendment to pass, and now we've had the benefit of it for another 100 years. 
and all the changes we've seen in these last 100 years, I'm sure the votes of women have made a difference in more than a few elections, especially presidential elections. And I know they're going to make a huge difference on no November 3rd. Yep, I certainly hope so. Sharon, you're pretty quiet tonight. Sharon is from Texas, and I think she's probably sheltering in place from the storm. <laughs> Well, I'm out in West Texas, so I'm pretty far away from the storm, but uh, Thanks, Amanda. I just kudos to all of you. You know, I started these programs months ago and just on a fluke, I'm not even sure where I heard about it. I watched the movie Borderlands and somehow that led me to Brockton, uh, but I've just thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, you know, I feel like I'm not even sure people in Lubbock know that the 19th Amendment passed. I, just, you know, I, I, love, I love being with a crowd that's educated on the issues and cares about them. And uh, so I, I want these to keep on going past November. So. <laughs> well, you're going to have to try to convince Paul of that. <laughs> no, I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I've learned so much. And, you know, I was still thinking about the native, the video with the Native Americans about the Native American voting issue in New Mexico. And I just, I just learned so much. So I, I feel like I'm a, a almost a surreptitiously snuck in on some of these meetings, but I, I appreciate Math Humanities doing this for this Texas girl. So. Sharon, so, something's going to keep going after November, so we'll <laughs> keep you informed and we look forward to seeing you at the events. Well, I tell you, I'm, I'm heading up to Vermont and I'm, I just have to get out of here. In the, and I usually go through Massachusetts and Maine, and, but I looked at all the COVID restrictions last night. I'm just like, ugh. You know, so I'm, I'm heading straight to Vermont and to stay with a friend. And I think coming from Vermont, I can go back down through Massachusetts and not have so many restrictions. So uh, I may be stopping by Brockton on my way, on my way home. So we'll see. But, we look forward uh, to that. We yeah. Visit. Okay. Chris, you, Chris, you've been awfully quiet. Oh, I, so many other people have had um, have said so many wonderful things, especially the young people who made those wonderful poems and the artwork. Um, I've just been enjoying this whole process. And uh, when we, um, we were forced, you were all forced to go virtual instead of in, you know, in person, it was kind of a blow. But I think you've recovered beautifully. You've, you've put it all together. You've managed to march on into the light with, uh, with all your efforts. And it's just been wonderful. Wonderful experience. Lynn, what about you? Sorry, I'm, I'm multitasking here. I'm listening to a, <laughs> a, a production called Women on Stage. Um, so sorry if you hear that in the background. <laughs> um, it's, uh, but I, I've just, as I said in my little one minute video there, um, I've really just enjoyed everything. It's been great just learning, you know, so much more. I, you know, you think, you know, what you've heard of, you know, all these women, Elizabeth Cady Stanton and Elizabeth, you know, Alice Paul. And it's like, no, there's so much more that went on <laughs> that isn't taught. And um, so I've really enjoyed it. And I look forward to trying to incorporate as much as I can into my classes at school. Um, virtually, of course, for a while. <laughs> but um, I think you have done a phenomenal job at the Brockton Library with all the presentations. I'm sorry I missed some of them. So I, I hope they're going to be on your Facebook page for a while so I can go back and catch the ones I missed. And I just really thank everybody for everything you did. It was great to, you know, come to the discussions and hear other people and their points of view. So it's been great. And I'm like, um, I forgot now, is it Sally or Sandra from Texas? Sharon. Sharon. I knew it began with an S. I'm like her. I wanted to continue. I don't want it to end. <laughs> so, and, uh, so great job, everybody. Thanks, Lynn. So Willie, um, from an educational point of view, I mean, I remember my first conversation with Willie. Of course, it took about three months to try to get a hold of him. He's so busy. He's got so much on his plate. Um, but I remember that day we were up in the maker space and we must have talked for like four and a half hours. I swear. And, you know, I really feel like once you had an understanding of what we were trying to do, you just, boy, did you jump in with both feet and then some. 
Oh yes, I, I uh, uh, it, this this project has just been uh, enveloping. I mean, uh, I, 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 you know, the more work I put in, the more, and you know, I'm, I'm thinking like I, I should actually do an article or a book because it's just eating up my my time, but it's enjoyable. And um, and when I want to say that uh, I had already done some research, so I had. Uh, information and and uh, some records concerning your grandmother when she was uh, when she was in office and mentions of her from uh, from anecdotal sources and in some some records so I knew about that but uh, that Brockton has such an important spot you know uh, played such an important role and uh, all the women that uh, the, the meeting that Blanche Ames had at her home in 1915, uh, I think we had about 15 women from Brockton who were involved in, in that meeting. So it's just it's just doing the research. Uh, you know, I had to leave that alone so I could focus on the black suffragettes, which, you know, right now I think we're up to about 45. Um, <sighs> wow. Uh, who these are the people Amina mentioned who who weren't even mentioned but uh, who have participated and and I want to explain uh, since since Lynn Howard is a member of the uh, South Shore branch of the American Association of University Women Mary Church Terrell was a black woman who started that organization you know so uh, it's just the 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 way the intersections of uh, you know the the more research you do you see the connections. And it just gives one pause to be uh, really proud to be a citizen or connected to, to Brockton. And it, and it all started uh, in the maker space room and, uh, and, and accessing those monies from uh, the Barbara Lee Family Foundation, you know, which has allowed us to do, but it's, it's been more work that, that, I, that I had bargained for. But I, the thing that uh, when we had that meeting, you had like several pages of activities. And I said, this, this is ridiculous, you know. And I, I know you weren't on drugs, but I said, this is, this is, a, you know, this is, you know, and I thought it was a little too ambitious, but what's, what's in a way COVID has allowed us to morph and, uh, and, and still maintain that. What I loved about it, the project with Amina, with Brockton High School, Greg Hazelwood, uh, it, so it's allowed us to have that youth connectiveness, which is very important in any kind of program. So, it, you know, it's just, it's just been very exciting. It's been very rewarding personally, but I do want to wrap it up. I mean, I think it should continue, but I mean, my portion in terms of the, the scholarly piece on Black Suffragette, uh, Thomas O'Hearn has been a great help, uh, but it's just like, it just goes on and on and on. And, uh, and I do want to wrap it up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, you don't want to write a book? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm actually thinking, my, my wife said, wow, you're spending more time. You're doing that again? You know, suffragettes, suffragettes. Oh, you know, and it's just like, well, because what happens is the, the events we have, I can't, even the PBS two-part documentary, I can't miss anything because it might have a, uh, more information to another connection, you know. So uh, it just, it's, you know, it's required me to to do uh, the reading I knew, the research I knew, but, you know, I've also had to watch uh, some of the videos. And then I don't want to miss one of our events because they're so good, you know. And we've had people from all across the country, uh, just, you know, just like Sharon, who, who uh, you know, there was another lady from Texas, and then somebody, you know, people are just joining in and it's just, it's just so interesting, you know. But one of the things that I want to uh, uh, call to your attention, and it's so beautifully re re reflected in Melody's poem, is the, you know, the fact that uh, when the, when the, the law was passed in 1920, millions of women of color still couldn't vote. And so, you know, you're talking 45 years after the legislation was passed for, for women of color in the South to vote. And, the, and it's like the rest of the nation, Wyoming, Massachusetts, California, they forgot about those women. And, it's, and, and it, that, that still pains me because uh, 
I had relatives, my father was from South Carolina, and I had relatives who couldn't vote, who were restricted and uh, because of segregation and Jim Crow. And, uh, and, I, and I mentioned before, if, if you know, it, it's just, uh, it's, it's amazing, but, and I'm hoping the next hundred years, and I agree with Wynn, and I, I used to tell, I told my students at Brockton High, and I told my students at Massasoit, Bridgewater State University and, and Stonehill. I t I, and, I, and I always say, you know, that someday in this nation, women will rule. And I said, it's gonna be, uh, it, it, and I said, it's gonna be a different time. And, and, and I agree with you when they, there's a sensitivity uh, to issues that men don't see. And uh, I'm just glad I had amongst my five children, I had two daughters. So, and I'm hoping to see that day, but it's very, very important. The poem that Melody wrote just moved me to tears. Uh, very, very poignant. And uh, it, 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 it encapsulizes what has happened. And also there's that thread of hope for the future. Joe. There you go. Yeah, don't ask me to talk, Lynn, because you know, I mean, uh, uh, Pat, because you know I'll go on and on. <laughs> really, really, you're talking yourself into more work here, I think. <laughs> well, I just, it's just, it's just been so, uh, you know, you saw the program I did on Black Suffragettes. It was, yeah. it was mo emotionally, uh, these are women, now I teach African American history at the college level, and it was just, I'm learning so much. It's just like hidden figures. I never heard of any of those. And, and students would say, Professor Wilson, did you know about so? No. So there's always an unearthing of material that's, uh, and it's just, it, it's just overwhelming, you know, so it just takes time. And Jen, you've been a great help. Keep it up, keep it up. I love my, but I didn't wear my button for the, uh, for the filming, but I said, I, I'll have it tonight, you know. Looks good, but, looks uh, good. The color, the city hall, it was just moving. In fact, I'm, I'm, I'm debating to take a drive down, just to <laughs> see it, you know, but it, the, the, the colors, the way they did the lighting, I was really impressed, very impressed. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the um, did an excellent job. Well, as yeah. Paul, as Paul knows, um, they, he had purple, but the gold that they sent him was orange. So when he said that, it's like, no, I don't want orange up there. <laughs> so uh, Grady actually searched around to find um, uh, the gels for the lights, the gold gels for the lights at a couple of different facilities in Canton. So he was driving back and forth like two or three times to get them. It's actually called Gold Rush. Uh, old rush. Oh, wow. Yeah, because you know what? I to be honest, I didn't uh, I didn't ex I knew it was gonna yeah. look nice, but it it it's beyond nice. Yeah. And the hue on the side of the building doing the frontis piece in purple and then the background in gold, it's just just wrought with symbolism. I was very impressed. Yeah, the whole thing has been great. Well, that was a change from the last minute, and Grady can explain what happened last night when they were testing it, which is why it was so important to test this. We were supposed to be testing on Monday night, but there was a city council meeting, and Tim was afraid that if the lights were turned off so we could actually take the photos, somebody might get hurt. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I will uh, fill in a little bit of information about that. Um, it was really interesting. Last night, Tim said that he thought the purple was a little weak, so he had doubled up on the purple gels to make it more royal. But the problem is then the, the uh, gold gels were too bright. So then, without me suggesting anything, Tim figured out if he moved all the purple gels to the center to light the tower and then move the gold gels to the side that it would make it look right. I am blown away with the way Tim handled that. Hmm. I mean, he, he is an amazing man. Uh, I've just never seen, I, we've had City Hall lit before. It was just so impressive, very mo emotional, very emotional to me. Yeah. I, I, I'd like to just take a minute because I'm going to take Juliet out for her last romp of the evening. That's very important in this house. 
But I would like to uh, tell all of you what an honor it's been to be here. Uh, uh, to just be a small part of this, but to see something historical, something that we'll look back and, and reflect upon. And, and I know we will in November, uh, because I meant what I said earlier. So to all of you, uh, and you know, especially to you, Willie, you remain ageless while I, while I continue to age profoundly. <laughs> I don't know what the is, but uh, to all of you, uh, my, my sincere thanks for being able to join you this evening and just play a small part of this. It, it's truly historical. Thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everyone. Okay. All right. Night. Great program. Thank you. Uh, I hope I see all you guys on Sunday. <laughs> Pat, you're <Yeah>. muted. <laughs> um, I just want to say that that would make a fabulous postcard. That that uh, picture. Oh, I love it. Mm -hmm. Fabulous postcard. Yep, mm. it would. All right, Pat, let's wrap it up so I can go take a drive and take a picture. Okay. <laughs> I'm going down. <laughs> I'm going. Don't tell the mayor. <laughs> thank you, everybody. And uh, yeah, you're done. thank Pat's you. And I'll and get myself to bed. <laughs> yeah, good night. Thanks, boss. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.